In today's video, I'm going to be fitting these instrument pods to the Smart for Two 451. Back in 2008, certain models had these additional instruments up here on the dash fitted as standard, namely the Pulse and the Brabus models. But if you owned a Pure or a Passion like this car, you could have paid £95 to have these as an optional extra when you ordered your car. So what do we need if we're retrofitting these instruments? Well, first of all, you need the actual instrument pods themselves, the rev counter and the clock. I got mine from someone I've been chatting to on one of the many smart Facebook groups, someone called Jordan Kuhn. I'll leave his details in the description for this video below, because if you're looking at this thinking you want some for your car, I know he has more of them. And he can help with many smart parts as he does dismantle these vehicles. And no, he hasn't paid me to say this. Now, if you're lucky when you buy a second-hand set of these instruments, these removable trim rings might already match what you have in your car around the instruments. In this case, they don't because these are silver, whereas on my car, the trims are gray. So I needed to buy some new trim rings. Part number's there, but it will be in the video description. You get a pack of two. I think they were about 22 pounds plus the VAT from the smart dealer. Cheaper to buy these from smart than it is from eBay where I've seen them for much more even used sometimes. And next you need the two mounting screws if you don't get these with your pods. Again, part number there and will be in the description. And finally, you could replace this trim for one with preformed cutouts for the two instrument pods but you don't need to because when you remove this, you will see an outline that you can use to cut these out yourself, providing you're good with a Stanley knife and a file. To begin with, this switch panel needs to be removed. We need to remove the entire switch panel, not just the fascia, which sometimes wants to come away by itself. This reveals a T25 screw in here. With the trim off the car, it's easy to see the outline for the cutouts right here. Welcome to my kitchen. In order to modify this panel, I like to sit down and work at a table so I've got a good steady surface and I can concentrate and hopefully make a good job of it. Using a new Stanley blade, I'm gonna cut around this line here, but I'm gonna stay well within the border of that line so I can finish the rest off with the file. It's actually quite soft and reasonably easy to cut, so it's important not to go too crazy because I can easily envisage a situation where I've cut more than I need. So well within the lines and then I can file that out. Okay, so less is definitely more here. I've been using this flat file to tidy up this edge. And just a round file for these corners. You don't want to remove more than you need for reasons that I will now demonstrate. We can position the two instruments into the recesses and if you've got this right you shouldn't see the cutout because of these trims and if you invert it you can see that these are able to sit pretty much flush in the recesses that we've carved out. You can always just file a little bit more off if this trim won't push fully down once these instruments are fitted. 
And just a final note on uh, the filing, bearing in mind that this trim fits down that way onto the dashboard. We want to be filing at that angle and not that angle. You want to be filing like that and not like that. If you do it like that, you will remove too much plastic and you will end up with something here that will actually show once it's all refitted. I'm happy with what I think is quite a neat job there. Back to the car. It's time to locate the wiring, which is already built into the loom. It's just a case of finding it and freeing it up because it might be taped into the loom. I'm gonna remove the radio because I think that might make it a whole lot easier. It's just four T25s. Straight away in here, behind where the radio was, I've found the connector. It's taped in here, so you just need to release this tape. And it's free. That needs to be passed through upwards. So it comes through here. With the connector securely fitted into its place and the wiring correctly routed, the two pods can now be screwed into position. These are T10s. We're only tightening up plastic onto plastic so we don't need to go crazy. Just firm. Let's get this radio back in. Time to refit the trim. And refit the T25. Clip this uh, switch panel back in. We now need to just remove these trim rings, bezels, whatever we want to call them, and swap them out with the ones that match the trims on my car. Here are the nice new grey ones to match the stalk ends and the instrument housing. That's one. And there we are, it's done. Well the clock's been moving, which is reassuring. Let's see if the rev counter works. And just like that, I've now got a rev counter and a clock in pods on my dash. A massive thank you to Jordan Kuhn, who supplied me with these at a very good price and sent them well packaged, arrived safely. Thank you very much. And if you'd like these pods for your smart, then why not get in touch with Jordan? His number is in the description below and it's also on screen. He can help you out with these instruments and also any other parts for your smart as he does break these vehicles. It's just worth mentioning that the later facelifted 451s do have a different arrangement, not quite the same parts, so just bear that in mind. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you again in another video very soon.